Today is Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is our recap of Winners at War Week 7. This episode was titled, We're in the Majors. That was spoken by Boston Rob. We start off the game at Edge of Extinction on night 16. Parvati has arrived. She's telling her story of woe is me. Nobody would work with me after you guys were gone. So lame, she says. Three versus me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure that was disappointing. She she didn't stay sad for long, though, because who showed up? Sandra. Sandra immediately says that she did it to herself. And I was right. She did tell exactly what happened. And they did give her, Rob and Parv, gave her some grief about it. It wasn't Parv, it was Amber. Rob and Amber Amber, didn't hesitate to make fun of her, essentially. They piled on right away. How could you do such a thing? (laughs) They didn't yeah. call her a Why dummy, did you give but... her that that kind of power? And Sandra said, hey, I'm human. I I felt something for Denise, and it, uh, it, it ended my game, but oh well. And then she proceeded to justify her quit. I don't want to deal with this. It's a waste of my time. I've There's... done everything I could. Yep. The odds are too slim for her get, getting back into the game. Get Denise for me, she says, as she lights her torch and heads out to raise the flag on the beach. She's okay to head on into her survivor retirement. So Queen Quitter raised the flag, and she was out. Yep. I was not surprised. That's true. You kind of predicted that, and I didn't think she would give in to it. A lot of people did not, I'm sure. I was wrong on that part. (laughs) You were right. Well, I've always sensed that about her. If things were hard enough not in her favor that she would bail and she certainly proved me right in tonight's episode well the thought of sitting out there on that island for 23 days just at a looking at the people around her that she would compete against doesn't mean she couldn't get back in this is all justification for quitting very slim this is just the quitter story yeah Yes, so she I have quit. no respect for it. I, I understand know. the you justification. You don't like quitters, blah, blah, blah. Yep, and I think it tarnishes her legacy. I'm looking forward to hearing what the other super fans think about that. But to me, it it shows something that I thought was always there, and I think it does tarnish the legacy. Sandra said it didn't, that she'll always be the queen. But this certainly should be a talking point for the feedback on Saturday. All righty then. We're not done with night 16 now. Let's pop over to the Sele camp because Wendell's performance really bugged Yule. Yep, he was. Well, and he should have been concerned. I mean, they really didn't know what Wendell was going to do, and it created a lot of uh, drama and uncertainty. Yeah, for Yule, th- for the others. Yule said that Wendell got into it with Parvati, so there must have been a lot more that we didn't see. Yeah, because that we didn't see him getting into it with her. And they we, had a we thought that extelmate was exchange kinda, was really what we got. But yeah, given the level of drama that Yule was describing, it sounds like something entirely different. Well, I like that Yule asked him directly. You know what was going on when you were trying to make a deal with Parvati? You know that puts a target on you, buddy. And Wendell very nicely thanked him for his input. Great study in contrast. Yes, That's what thank this is. You. This thank is, you, you, for this is the kind of for feedback letting me know. I appreciate back in the real world when I'm talking to my friends. And here comes Michelle saying basically the same thing. And what does he do? Yeah, he that. apologizes to everyone, but then he's like, "Well, thank you for trying to school me." 
And uh, then he tells the cameras that, well, I might just turn around and bite you if you try to control me. Right. There was two like, two things Ooh. he said that seemed pretty mean-spirited in response to her. Thank you for schooling me, and you think I didn't know what I was doing out there. Yep. Yeah, and then we get the confessional where he talks about being on the leash and biting back. Yep. What did you think about Yule's choice to address Michelle and tell her, hey, he's got a really different tone with you. I heard what he said. Well, I, I don't think that's a bad thing at all because then... You know, he can at least commiserate. The only thing there is, some people in their relationships have this kind of, I don't want to say addictive behavior, but they have a pattern. And if this was kind of their pattern, and uh, some people just are are locked into that kind of pattern. They don't always thank people for pointing things out or getting in the middle. I think now, this was this hmm. was potentially when you get to step back after we've consumed the whole episode and looked at it, it's worth a question because <laughs> I think you're yeah. you're spot on in that mm -hmm. you get in the middle is taking a huge risk, especially in this kind of a scenario. Now, it seemed to resonate with her. She seemed fully on board. And fired her up. Yeah, and I can't move forward with how him. Do you, how do you blah, move blah, forward blah, blah, blah. with someone that's acting like that? And yet... <laughs> and we learn, on top of all that, which was like the red flag warning to me that you might have made a mistake, we learned that she gave Wendell one of those fire tokens. I don't to try understand. To try to make up, make for whatever exchanges they had had prior to going to tribal council when they were going yeah, back see, and forth Yeah, see, that's a big red other. flag in the relationship as far as I'm concerned. What the heck did you have to make up for? And granted, we didn't see the whole thing. And girl, why would you give him your token? I well, she wanted had many. to kick her butt all the way back to home with that one. She was she was okay. flush with tokens. She had four mm -hmm. at that point. So giving mm -hmm. one up wasn't mm -hmm. like she gave up her only one, but she shared her bounty yeah. by giving Wendell a fire token. And then token. regretted it, which again <laughs> seems like a pattern to me. Don't. Anyway, no, but she she I declares at this point that she does not want you to are move a strong forward woman, with him. Girl, but Okay. Now we're on enjoy. we're on to the actual two day cycle because we we burned a fair bit of time there with those two things on night sixteen. Mm -hmm. Now it's finally day seventeen because this is this all takes place on night sixteen, day seventeen and eighteen. Yeah, already had my blood flowing. <laughs> so we're we're back at edge of extinction for those who are fans. I'm sure they were thrilled by this. We get these whisper oohs in the soundtrack that seemed a little ominous and a little ASMR-ish as they we were coming in. They wanted us to think in. Ethan was going to quit right off. Well, I, I don't know. I think they wanted us to think, if it were not for Parv, that he, he very well may have followed Sandra that morning. And he may have. Because he his... tells us he's questioning, why am I here? I feel defeated. It feels like there's no in hope. In this and... in-between world. Yeah, in the purgatory that is Edge of Extinction, and he feels destroyed. And then we see him talking to Parvati, and Parvati's trying to console him a little bit because it sounds like they've been down this road before, and yeah. that she's been a, a real helpful friend, been there for him in tough moments where he's waning. And she said, just imagine how good it'll be when it's over, trying to help him find a positive, because this, when you're in a crisis situation, when things are way outside of your control you need to focus on the positive because right. if you embrace the negative you will spiral in mm -hmm. That's and you true. give in to defeat well and even her saying and if you did leave how are you going to feel after you have to think about that because the regrets after are significant he, he was tearing up he seemed on yeah. the verge of a walk to me i think she pulled him back in she she lifelined him because they had a relationship, which is evidently a theme of the season, prior relationships, and it's significant for him for sure because she was able to buoy well, him up and give him some strength. I feel like he does have legitimate concerns with his health. Sure. 
He, he really does. No, no way you can argue out of that. Yeah, and so I would be concerned as well, though part of tells him, well, you know, fasting is good. It's like, well, to a certain extent it's good, but I don't know about, you know, 30 days of fasting is good for for him but it, it depends uh, or on anyone depends on where you are and where your body is and so for some people they could do that and not be worse for wear others yeah it could be harder but for sure i think parv lightened the mood she uh she refocused him. him on the positive and you know got him to laugh a little and just he had gone to his sunken place, and she gave him a hand and reached You're down You're okay. You're going to make him it. back up. Yeah, and he tells us that Parv keeps him strong, and he came here to play, so he's going to pick himself up, and he's going to come back stronger. So he goes and gets the clue for Edge of Extinction, and it turns out it's a bunch of scrolls, and they all have to open and read them at the same time. <laughs> That's Everybody so they can jump up and run if they want to. Right, and it... So the clue says there are four fire tokens hidden at the ends of the trail, trails, the the edge of the island, basically. And, and yeah, Rob takes Rob off. Rob thinks <laughs> he knows exactly where it is. Sprinting. Parv's worried about sprinting. the rice, which is still on the fire, but I'm pretty sure that you can just at the edge of the frame, you can see Amber's hat, and she rescues the rice. And just takes uh, it off. They can, as they they can cook out. it more when they get back. But. Right. Okay, and Tyson... Not missing an opportunity to diss someone, even his friend, tells us that Rob is a portly chap, and therefore uh, Tyson is very confident that he can find the tokens and reach them before Rob does. Mm-hmm. He does find one, he they show us. He does find one. And he declares, I'm amazing. Well, were you surprised that he told them he found one? Oh, he likes rubbing stuff in people's faces. He didn't last time. No, he 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 didn't in that case, but we know that he likes doing this. Okay. Just like he likes saying, I'm so amazing. He, I, I <laughs> thought maybe he was just trying to get other people to, psych to share. Out. No, just to share information. Oh. So if they had been found, that he didn't waste all the energy trying to find them. Well, you could... It seemed like we were able to see the impact of Boston Rob on all of them because I think it was even Natically, Natically, <laughs> Natalie who declared, I ran all those words together, uh, let's frisk it now. So every let's let's yep. search everyone. Rob pulls his shirt up, yeah. turns around. Yep. Nice. And after they're done with all that, we get one of the, the he great didn't empty his pockets. The great editing moments that they've uh techniques that they've adopted this was good. they give us a flashback where rob confesses i got three of them and i took one right out from under ethan's nose and he walks through how he found the other three because he'd already found one and he knew what he was looking for so he spotted it at which point at the end of this confessional he declares we're in the majors i'm batting 750 with three out of four i'm the best that ever played he ends with <laughs> Not if you don't get back in the game, you know. <laughs> well, now he's in a position to buy three advantages, just like Natalie yep, is. Yep, so yep. that could be quite the su surprise <laughs> for she thinks she's going to have a big leap out ahead of everyone, and he walks up well, right beside her still into have the, more. the third stage. Well, you, you can only buy three advantages for the return well, challenge. I know, but you don't have to buy that many even. No, but if you've got three, why wouldn't you give yourself no, I don't know. that much of <laughs> A head start. That's and, what this is all about. Yeah, well, yeah. And he'll share with Amber so she doesn't lose either. He'll, hmm. he'll share oh, information. That's, a, that's an interesting perspective. Do you There's think no he'll way they could stop him. Now, it may not help her in the game if it's something that they get to move forward or go past. or. But if it's just information, then it could be shared. Do you think they will pool their fire tokens since they're there as a couple? I don't know. They might get a, get themselves something to eat. They could. Assuming they knew when the challenge was coming. In addition they to could. him being able to purchase three they advantages. They could or buy a, 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 a jar of peanut butter to share. He could share one of his fire tokens and then they could both have two advantages in the challenge. True. That is a possibility. All right, so now we we're gonna visit. finally get to day 17. To, this was day 17. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. 
we're we're well, finally going to get meant, back I'm, to the tribes. I meant back at the tribes. Day yeah. 17. So we're going to make the rounds with each of the tribes. So let's mention this because it it doesn't end up coming up, and we were anticipating it. There was a reward challenge for this cycle. Yeah, because we saw the photos. In the Press Express photos, you could clearly see, and it was even labeled, this is the reward challenge. Yes, and so we were expecting it. one that involved it. a slingshot. Yeah, so we were a little puzzled. And you kept going, well, but they're running it'll out be of time. They when we come it, back, they yeah, do. so they didn't end up showing they it. That's how this place <laughs> plays out. And that's why they didn't give a reward with the immunity challenge. They'd already had a reward challenge, and whatever reward they got, they'd already gotten so yeah, and maybe we we'll, have no idea we'll find out in the extras hopefully yeah maybe maybe they'll show that in the extra videos but there was a reward challenge we just didn't have enough time to see it i was looking forward to seeing the slingshot i like those so we start off on day 17 with the decal tribe and they're encouraging tony to demonstrate his sprinting ability as they're all four down I at the beach i think they were they were just wanting to poke fun at tony yeah, i think given what jeremy says yes. in response to <laughs> observing tony sprint that you're correct mm -hmm. he says he runs like an old man as tony stumbles as he nears the end of his sprint and then tony proceeds to tell us how very close he is with kim and jeremy too so he's in good shape and he's happy that denise chose to make such a flashy move and oh, made herself yeah, a big and a target big target that works great for I want to just back up just a second, though, because when he comes back from his sprint, Kim tells him, you were a blur. We couldn't even see how fast you were moving. So Kim was in on the making fun oh, of yeah. him, too, with Jeremy. And Denise yep. responds, hey, you're going to get me voted out, aren't you, Tony? But then Jeremy tells us, for real, Tony's the bigger threat in this game. And he's aware of that. So then Kim and Jeremy talk, and... She's like, we need a plan, you know. I, for the merge. Yeah, for the merge. She's I really feel ahead. good with you and Denise. And, uh, you know, she could vote out Tony if she needed to. This was certainly how I was thinking that these. this was going to be a solid three. I had picked Tony to be voted out this episode. And when I saw this come together, I thought, okay, that's step one right there for yeah. for getting my vote out points these three are indeed tight and they proceed to confirm it with jeremy saying it and kim saying it and then denise mm -hmm. and kim talking about it and how they all feel awesome about the three of them being solid and yeah I, he would have been it had i chosen that team to lose he would have been my vote out choice on that from that team denise tells us in her confessional she's ready to go deep with these three with her, Jeremy, and Kim. And yes, yeah, she sometimes gets tagged with being an under the radar or a coattail player, but she assures us that she is here to play. Certainly her well, actions speak louder than her words. And she said, I single-handedly took out the coin. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, yes, let's, you did. Let's check in with the Yara tribe and see what's going on there. Cut to Ben singing one of my favorite tunes. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, Ben thinks, uh, uh, wants to know if Adam found an idol. He thinks he might have the idol. And Adam just is feeling very harassed. What does Adam say? Tone. It's your tone, tone. Ben. <laughs> so Ben changes his tone I can, audibly. I can never, ever <laughs> hear the word tone without thinking of James yep, yep. telling it. Well, my girlfriend says it's my tone. It's not always what I say. It's my tone. <laughs> so Ben, not missing an opportunity to poke at Adam a little bit, changes his tone, makes his voice a little higher pitched. <laughs> and then he says, come on, let's go look for the idol. Because Adam is absolutely convinced either Ben or Sarah has it. And they're just pretending to Which look. Which is funny. Why doesn't he think Sophie? Sophie's the one not looking. He's, Why wouldn't you sus he's suspect? He's already scoped her out. And as oh, he tells Sophie, he has a spider sense. And it's tingling yep. saying Sarah or Ben have it. Which was hilarious. Yep. That spiny sense was telling him. It's got to be one of them. But Sophie tells him, you know, enough idle talk. It's dividing us. We need to just forget it. After Sarah had offered to dump her bag out and let him search through it, so she causes bluff. Yep. And then Adam's really not 
letting it go. He just, because Sophie pushed, he backed off. He tells us in his confessional, I am confident Sarah or Ben have it. Yep. Well, wrong. <laughs> Sarah knows about it. Maybe that's what his spiny sense is, spidey sense is picking up. Yeah, you were saying spiny before. But spiny. spiny. <laughs> your spidey sense maybe tickles spiny. your spine. Time for the immunity challenge. So it's one that we've seen before, and certainly Nick has experienced it, which Propes is eager to remind us of once it gets started. Yeah, and boy, I chose green to lose this because I thought, <laughs> you know, I didn't think uh, Sophie had upper body strength, and Adam I didn't think was that strong. Right. And so I kind of thought they might be at a... And the height differences Uh huh. I thought might be an issue as well, but... I was. Yeah, I certainly I looked wrong. at the height difference and thought that would probably be a factor for DeCall, <clears throat> the disparity with Denise being so much shorter. And I thought about it a little bit, and I thought, well, you really only need three legs to make a stool stable. So even if you've got a fourth person who can't carry their weight, they can kind of swing and buddy up with someone, and they could figure this out and make it work. And yet you still went with them to lose. I did because I was looking, okay, who's going to do the puzzle? Denise, Jeremy, Kim, Tony, not Tony, uh, Kim, Jeremy. De I, I could see them goofing the puzzle, especially mm -hmm. after having struggled uh, more than I anticipated for them. So they got that great big saucer that's really heavy they have to carry, and then they have to fill it with water, and then they have to move it through an obstacle course and then dump the water into a well, and as soon as they have enough water in there, it'll... Uh, raise the let go of the tension on the rope and then the puzzle pieces will come down you can collect those and then you go and place the saucer you are carrying on a pedestal and solve the puzzle in the center of that soft saucer it's a circular puzzle basically saying season 40 of survivor well here's the thing the uh, yara tribe had a good strategy which nobody knew whether it would pay off or not right. but obviously they thought it through and and deemed it best to go carefully and slowly and uh, save as much water. Yeah, because if it hadn't worked, they would have been in the rear. Because it's not in the rear. It's, it's not clear how much water that you need, and you're not necessarily going to know if there's even enough in a full saucer unless they had told them that. That little piece of information yeah. would be critical and potentially making the choice to to go slow conserve water as you move through the obstacle yeah. course trying not to spill well the good news was it worked <laughs> though the others weren't that far behind them going back and getting more so but it did give them uh, an advantage yep michelle ate it right as they were heading out on the obstacle oh, course yeah. to pick up the saucer but it didn't seem to affect her too much and Kim even dropped the saucer on their way back to fill it up the first time. She was she struggling. She looked like it hurt, but she, um, you know, that's, it's like me when I did uh, a flip going down the ski mountain once. And, <laughs> and the whole mountain stopped like, oh my gosh, is she going to, and I was like, oh, I hurt like all the dickens. get out. And I was, and I was like, but I'm embarrassed. I'm getting up. <laughs> And I was like, this. oh, no, I'm fine. I'm yep. fine. So I kind of thought she might just be embarrassed more than, though I think she. Probes takes that opportunity to remind Nick that this was his previous run here was the worst, perform one of the worst performances in a challenge in Survivor history <laughs> back during his season. <laughs> mm -hmm. When him, the Rice Queen, and Mr. Sneebly were working on this. Wendell tried to get water on his shirt so he could wring some extra water out, but really he should have been more concerned with their blocking the the water that was going sloshing out off the, side. the sides. Yeah. yeah, definitely they weren't paying a lot of attention to that. But Yara did their slow pour made a huge difference in being able to get enough water in there. They sure didn't show Wendell showboating, and you know, like they did in the last season that he played. You're contrasting the season he won with this one and how yes. the edit is treating him differently. Yes, I am. Yes. Yeah. And you could tell it was annoying Yule, which distracts the team from their unity. You know, it's, I see it as a bigger so problem let's, let's that way. let's catch up with where you are. Yara finishes first okay. on their puzzle pieces, and then it's a face-off between Dakal and Sele between the red and the blue tribe and the, the call barely squeaked it out 
and then we hear like you were talking about Nick and Yule were both really concerned with the impact that that smack talking had and slowing them down to solve the puzzle there on the CLA tribe. Well, I think Yule was concerned way before that when he was uh, telling Wendell as they were going over the obstacle, don't pay him any attention. Because Wendell was saying, don't exaggerate, Jeff. <laughs> yep, he was definitely trying to continue that back and forth with Probst. Yep. Well, look what that got him. Okay, so Yara pulls it out. And the call right behind them, boy, Jeff said that was less than a second's difference. I mean, literally, one piece went in and then the other right behind it. So. Yep. Sele is going to tribal. Well, that hurts worse when it's that close, I think. Nick says it's a familiar feeling, losing, in response to Prope's question. Do you think salt that's in the wounds. really what's going on? Is he just so mad at Wendell? He, He's having trouble. He seemed to be fuming at Wendell, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, yeah, he's angry, but he's also angry at Wendell and not wanting to... Yule tells us Wendell was a showboat and a trash talker, and he dug his own grave. Therefore, he must go, at which point I realized, hey, I'm going to lose a safe point because now Yule is in play as someone to be voted out. Yep. And I hadn't seen it until right there. You had him safe. I did. Yep, I was trying to spread out my safes. I had You didn't even think that was bold. To, no, I didn't. <laughs> I, I thought it was pretty clear they were going to be able to solve See, that puzzle and win. You didn't play bold enough. Could be. They're back at camp. They're on day 18, and we get to see a praying mantis. Kill another one. Yep, it's usually what the females do to the males after they're done well, procreating. <laughs> well, that didn't happen, or Michelle would have killed Wendell. Michelle <laughs> says... Michelle says, I am sorry, guys, about that puzzle. And that's when we hear from Nick. It was really Wendell showboating that cost us that, he says. Yep, yep. Not if out he, loud for Wendell, Wendell, Wendell to hear. Wendell that but, way. Yeah, in his confessional. We'd have won. Nick and, and Yule yeah. are talking, and they say the plan is Wendell. And we'll tell him that we're voting out Michelle to cover it. Good deal. Wendell and Michelle, meanwhile, are getting water. Uh, Wendell says, Yule's going to target me. You got to vote with me against him. And Michelle's like, I'm okay with whatever you want. And then Yule talks to Michelle, and she seemed to kind of be on board with voting Wendell. Well, she seemed a little distracted, and that's when she said that she was annoyed that she'd given a fire token. Giving him token. the tokens. That's That <laughs> yeah. was her main focus, is giving up those tokens. Darn it, I did that. And so that gets Yule's gears to turning. Mm hmm. But how, how can we make this happen? Vote Wendell out and get his fire falls tokens. Falls victims to the tokens again. Because when Nick overhears this scheming, he realizes, wait a minute. I don't know that I want to play against Yule. Well, maybe we better take Yule out. It's a Michaela moment when Yule draws out the strategy yeah. for getting those tokens and the complexity that it involves. It puts the fear yep. of Yule he's into gonna, Nick. He's going to control us. Wow, he is so many steps ahead of us. I may need to get rid of him. Yep, he said, probably because he didn't even think about that. Yule didn't even draw it in the sand for him. Yep. So uh, I thought, oh, no. These dang tokens are going to get him out, too. And then we see Nick and Michelle talking, and they're saying that Yule is making this complicated. And if we end up going forward with him, it's going to be his set of plans that we follow with him mm -hmm. getting credit for it. Well, and Michelle's still concerned about... She she thinks she's proving that she deserved her last win and this one, too. Oh, yeah, she shared that she'd spent four years feeling like maybe she didn't deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, and that she's feeling more like that now. She also tells Nick when they're having that conversation, I'll follow you. And then in the confessional, she says that Wendell had hurt her, and she's happy to get some revenge. She's, she's trying to balance that with the fact that Yule is super strategic, and trying to figure out which way to go is tough. Yep, so they're kind of all over the board. Well, it's classic. The editors love to give us at least two options. I, I still thought it was going to be Yule going into trouble, though, because... Um, the fear of the strategist... With her pattern. You, you're looking at it a different way. These pre-existing relationships and its impact it's had on her and her fixation that she's had on Wendell. Yeah. Yeah, you thought Yule was done at this point and his goose was cooked. So Jeff 
of course, starts in with Wendell right, right away. So I don't know how much we didn't get to see. There must have been a lot more interaction between Jeff and Wendell than we got to see for them to be that mad at Wendell and for Jeff to, you know, for them to uh, stare each other down right at the beginning of Tribal. So I think there was a I, lot more than we got to see. Perhaps. And certainly that's a smack talking. what they always tell us. But it did start with Probst not saying anything out loud. So they, they show Probst, and he's smirking, smiling. Wendell ends up saying it's a smirk, and he's not saying anything. And then Wendell, he can't have it, so he has to say, what? What? <laughs> what? What, Wendell? Wendell says, that smirk, Probst, and he's not happy to be here. He's had a bad day. And Probst hits Yule with the old school question, since Yule's the old school person who's still here. Yeah, Jeff wanted to point that out. You're you're the last older uh, older player this, here. This seemed like a mistake on Yule's part. It's too much information. He should have applied the weight principle, which is short for why am I talking? Because he goes on to share, yeah, the old school, and this is playing a lot faster. And if I've had to lie more than I did my whole last season in this game. Then he piles on with the fire tokens. I'm sure this made Propes super happy. And so he was definitely feeding lines for Propes about how the fire tokens have layer, have created layers of duplicity in a market economy and the how much it's impacted the risk versus reward calculations that Yule likes to make when he's making his decisions. I'm sure Propes was eating all that up. But meanwhile, it's just like it's too much. And Wendell just says, well, you know, you got to find people you trust. And then you'll start in with the, well, the pre-existing relationships. And if you've already done that that work, then, you know, you're already at an advantage. Yeah, he cut Nick's response off to say all that. He was nodding his head vigorously. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, he then went what, to say what that Then what was too. it Wendell said? He started spouting all the... Well, Wendell you know, said that it's certainly scary to be in this situation, but he was playing to win. And that... That was what triggered Michelle. She started smiling real big, which, of course, grabs Prop's attention. He doesn't care about what happens to me in the future. Wendell's here for him and no one else. Well, he kind of Everyone said sees our that, attention. So. Well, yeah, what else are which you going to think? Which is true, but for you to continue to say it at every tribal council. What did you think of Wendell's tone when he declared, I care for you? And your future mm. in response to Michelle stating those concerns. I, I'm already not paying him any attention. You already tuned it's him out. Just bull. <laughs> That's what you thought of his tone. Yeah, it was a it was a pacifying tone, but. Mm. What about this next little exchange before they had to go vote? Where it's how you're going to treat it if you're the one who gets voted out. Okay, I kind of liked. What Nick said about what did he say? this is this these four right here. This is my final four, and if I go to EOE tonight, I'm not gonna hold it against him because he knew he wasn't going. Uh, but I would come back and work with them again. Mm -hmm. So basically, I think what he was trying to say is, but if you get back in, you know, which you could, we want the you to work open. with it. The doors open, and I really want to work with you. <laughs> Okay. Don't hold this against me. Just Interesting. I, so you thought he was talking to group. future Yule. I, I think he was. I think oh, he was okay. putting that in Yule's mind what that about Wendell's I choice? can't work with him. Wendell kept it real. He said, well, that, that's, that might sting, and that might be a little more difficult for me to do than it is for Nick. So <laughs> yeah. maybe not so much. Well, I, don't, I think Wendell was in the moment and not even looking down the road at all. So I think he just about Yule's response? Him. Um, he almost kind of landed in the middle between those two, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, I'll he be wasn't bitter. Sure, but, but I want the option to work with you. Probst wasn't having it though. He didn't yeah. think that was sincere. Well, he's basically saying, "Well, I don't really know anybody else." Mm. Sandra's gone. Which he was working true. with her. No, it isn't. Yeah, he, he has other with, options. He he does. And m my thought was, is he may well choose to take them, but uh, it made me curious. If Yule's the one that's going to come back, because they showed this, mm -hmm. they took time to show it. Out to of the us. things that were said in Tribal Council, they chose yes, to share this. That's so. what stuck out oh, okay. most to me. Gotcha. Was 
Hmm. Are they trying to tell us something you're, here you're or not? Reading the tea leaves. Well, Michelle says she loves them all, and this is just I a love cursed these, situation these that, boys. that I they're love in. Them. Well, she had such a sad <laughs> face when she went to go vote that I thought, oh, well, maybe maybe she did vote Wendell out. Well, <laughs> no, I didn't think she. I didn't think she was. Well, but. that sad face when when she was up there voting yeah. made me consider that for a moment because. I'd already thought it, it was Yule. gave her an easy out. So. And we get one vote for Yule and one vote for Wendell and then two more for Yule and Yule is voted out. Out. End of the old schoolers, at least in active play. Okay, so Yule gives, this is the first we've seen, one token to Sophie and one to Sarah. Yeah. Who knew? Because he's probably thinking ahead to, hmm... If I do get get back in, I want to work with the girls again. Got these other options, I'm like we were saying. I'm gonna send them each a token. Yeah, and let them know a I sent it to them. Token of my appreciation. And I want to work with them when <laughs> I get back in there. There you go. Not these guys who just voted me out. Yeah. Why no, would I work with no them? No tokens for you. Wendell says thank you guys as Yule's making his exit. Nick declares you're welcome. And Michelle says, well, it was good to see you shaking in your boots. So she got to vote out Yule and get a little revenge on Wendell, too. Uh, uh, <laughs> I will choose to say nothing. Okay. What What did you think of the episode overall? Is it, oh, it was you, good. Yeah? Are you real disappointed to see Yule go out? No. Not super sad? I think a lot of no. people are going to be super sad that the Yule Meister's got headed off to the uh, edge. No, no more than the others. I'm sad to see them all go. Hmm. I, I don't who what and I said to go. I, I kind of <laughs> like them all, so uh-huh. they all have their you know moments. But I I was pretty fine with everybody that went, and I called most of them in the preseason before the first blah, episode. Blah, blah. <laughs> the one that I guess disappointed me the most was when Natalie went first. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was yeah. an interesting episode. We certainly had to spend some time at Edge because things were happening there. And that was a little much time at Edge, but okay. Next time on Survivor, the merge is finally here. Drop your buffs. And Adam's upset because Ben just is pretending he don't know what's going on. And he wants to make fun of him. He pretends <laughs> like he's Ben talking. Then nothing has Slow changed, Adam. Get a clue. Yeah. Ben's not thrilled with Wendell you. and Adam are both being targeted after the merge, so there's lots of plans Yay. being laid. That works. And Yule shows up out at uh, the uh, EOE and tells them all, man, that was a bitter pill to swallow. Mm-hmm. And I think, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think the there'll be a challenge so we'll be getting someone back from edge so it won't be it won't be 11 for long they'll go back up to 12 yeah we'll have to rewatch we might have missed a few things but we'll catch it on the rewatch yep and we can always talk about it on saturday if we miss some well who do you think is going to be the big target for the merge tribe oh uh think tony will still be a prominent target or Will there be some backlash against some people? I would, Does that talk about I would, Wendell and Adam Wendell, real? Wendell, Jeremy, uh, Ben, maybe more physical threats. This is really what Adam needed to do. He needed to make it to the merge so he could blend yeah. into the background. Yeah. And so the game changes in the next mm-hmm. cycle because of that. Yes, he's more valuable because they're not, I don't think they're going to see him uh, as as much of a threat. But Adam's still intelligent, and he, he's he got lots of moves he could make, I think. But it just depends. I think not s- where Ben's concerned. Some though. alliance will probably pick him up as a vote. But he yeah. doesn't have, he doesn't seem to have the connections he needs to make a strong play. So he really needs to be invisible. At, and the merge offers that benefit. So yeah, even I though his so name's too. coming up, it's probably, I doubt he's in play. But he's probably going to be considered a good number. I think Tony and Sarah are on the threat profiles, the big names. You don't think Wendell's a physical threat or Jeremy? Oh, no. They they do represent a threat, and there could be some 
backlash for Wendell, but it, it's really going to be about who can coalesce the majority alliance Yep. to make it through. So with 12, where are they going to get seven so they can control that? And you've got the person who's coming back in. Are we going to see if we do have the return from edge challenge, if we get that, do you think someone with who do we got we got natalie and rob potentially rob and amber there but we've got two people who have the potential to buy an immunity idol to forgo advantages in the return challenge and take a risk on buying an immunity idol that mm -hmm. could ensure they stayed in the game in that next vote at least yeah long enough to make connections you think we'll see anyone go that route i think rob might do that he might be cocky right. enough to forgo getting advantages how, how and many, buy the immunity idol. How, how many does it take for the idol, though? Three. Oh, I don't know. So if you had six, you could buy three advantages for the challenge, maybe to bump you up three stages or to learn three details about what the challenge would be and have an immunity idol. So you could increase your chances of finishing first and be coming back in, but nobody has that. Sophie's got an idol. Kim's got an idol. Jeremy can exit tribal council, and Sarah can steal a vote. So no matter how it plays out, the potential for it to be exciting and interesting is really big there. So are you thinking that the original Decal tribe will come back together? Because you've got Kim, Tony, Sarah, Sophie, and Nick, and Wendell. If they did that, that's six that's the majority mm -hmm. though it just i don't think kim is good tony might trust that i don't think kim will because they had talked about voting her out and i think she got close maybe closer to yule but she might be close enough to sarah and sophie to want to go with them uh, just i'm not sure about that i don't know if she felt close to nick or wendell though but yeah, so you think it'll put Ben, Adam, and Michelle, and Denise in a little bit of a scramble? Mm, don't know. Sorry, and Jeremy. There's a lot to think about. There is, isn't there? It's exciting. So it should be quite an episode. Looking forward to that. How about a GSFL update? I can do that. All right. We have four people tied in first with 34 points. There were 53 people who lost their USB. 151 people lost a safe point. 29 people gained a vote-off point. All right. In the side challenge, with 33 points, Jay Kindred is in first. 31, Jeremiah. 30, Parker. With 29 points, you have Jonathan and Stacy. With 28, Cameron, Cold Mike, Drew, and Rebecca. 27 points, Brandon, Carl, Justin, and Slappy. With 26 points, Jack. And with 25, Chris. All right, there we have it. Certainly a lot of interesting developments, and we're looking forward to hearing what you thought about this episode. How you. What did you think? You never really said what you thought of the episode as a whole. Well, I think it's certainly tainted by Sarah, Sandra's decision. But it was, a, it was a good challenge. It was a nail biter. That was exciting. And certainly it went in a different way. So it surprised me. I didn't, mm -hmm. I really thought okay. Yule was in a good position. So I enjoyed those aspects of it. And I don't know, I don't know how he could have saved himself. Definitely there's some warning signs with the whole Michelle Wendell thing. Mm. That I don't think anybody's picking up on, but. You need to get rid of that chaos for sure. That That's a mess. That's a train wreck there. It'll be interesting to see what the others make of it. And well, if if the, it went red and blue again, uh, if, if that started happening, I don't believe Michelle would go with the blue. And remember, I think you she got would someone hang coming on to back. Wendell. True. You got someone coming back. So if Natalie comes back, then they've got a 6-6. Six, six. So it it becomes really interesting at that yeah, point yeah for sure and then sarah could steal a vote and tilt it whatever direction that she wants it to go in so i I'll, I'll, I'll be surprised if we don't see her stealing a vote to so that they can get a majority control because that's perfect 
I don't necessarily think that Kim or Sophie are going to feel the need to play their idols and Jeremy's. He, if he gets cold feet and steps out, that'll seal the fate <laughs> of that group. But I don't think he's necessarily going to be targeted either, and even though he represents a threat. that Everyone's should be focused on Tony and Sarah ahead of him. There's certainly bigger odds that a blue, an original blue will come back over original red because the only people from the red tribe was Tyson and Amber. Now, which they could win. And Sandra that quit, so she's not in play. Yeah, but you've got Parvati, Rob, Ethan, Danny, and Natalie, all from original Blue Tribe. Yeah, so I, I definitely enjoyed it. We had a good time chatting as we watched it and yeah, trying to figure out what was going on and sharing the things that we were seeing and what we thought was significant about that. And we certainly look forward to hearing from you and how it went down in your house. And, yep, this is... This is a, a good distraction, like everyone was saying. So we've been looking forward to Wednesday night, and we're looking forward to hearing what you thought and how your experience went down. The voicemail number is 206-350-1547, toll-free 844-643-8737. The email Joanne and Stacy show at gmail.com. Just had a bang-up, another bang-up listener feedback show last week. It was just great digging into it and... And hearing different people's perspectives and, yeah, and we, how they're uh, enjoying it and the significance it meant for everybody. Everybody got feedback in, you know, oh, earlier, and we we yes. got done early. Yes, it was awesome. <laughs> it was the first Saturday that we it's were like, done whoa, before it was dark. What are we gonna do? We have time at the end of the day. It's yes. not bedtime yet. Time for activities. Yes. Wow. <laughs> We can do something. What are we going to do? Good stuff. So we enjoyed that, and we appreciate everybody <laughs> keeping the... It, it'd be easy to run on and on, but when we've got a whole bunch of super fans that are so excited and in love with this show the same way we are, we try to put a lemon on it. So whether you're writing it up or calling it in or recording it yourself for that best audio quality, try to keep it in that three-minute range. We really appreciate that, and it helps helps create a good flow for the show that we put together on Saturdays. We're really looking forward to hearing from you. Anything else you'd like to nope. add? Good night, everybody.